Hi, I'm Scott McLean from TransMusicMastery.com. In this video, I will show you how Adam Sabo created a lead sound like the one heard in Ramsterdam, Jorn van Dainhoven remix by Ram. And the sound that Adam came up with sounds like this. <laughs> And let's go ahead and look at the MIDI sequence. In fact, I'm going to just point out basic structure and then you can download this and inspect it. And let me go ahead and collapse. I'll fold the MIDI display here so we see only the notes that are being used in the sequence. So the basic idea is that the lower two notes are alternating between A and E and then C and G and then B and F, and then that main melody part is played on top of that. And it's sort of this staircase style, upward trending melody line, and then it comes down right at the end. Yeah, just go ahead and download that and inspect it, and then you'll understand how that works, and if you have any questions, just let me know. So I'll go ahead and play it now with the sequence. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and walk through the sound map. And Adam Sabo says, This sound is a classic trance lead, which means lots of detuned saws. It's a bit more detuned than usual to give that thicker sound. A noise is added to brighten it a little and make it fuller. As usual, delay and reverb is a must. And you could hear that long reverb tail in the demo that I played earlier. So... This patch uses four oscillators plus a noise generator, and the first three oscillators are 11 stacked saw waves, and the fourth oscillator is a quad saw wave, and then for the noise generator, it's generating white noise. And all of these are mixed and flow into the filter, which is configured as an LP mid-drive, with the cutoff frequency being modulated by envelope 2 with a fast attack, medium decay, sustain at zero, and a medium release. That then flows into the amplifier with the volume being modulated by envelope 1 with fast attack, medium decay, sustain at 84% and a medium release. That flows into the effects and then to the main output. For the effects, the first thing is an EQ with a low shelf plus 1 dB near 175 Hz then a bandpass minus 4 dB near 280 Hz, another bandpass plus 4 dB near 2.8 kHz, and a high shelf plus 1.5 dB near 1.2 kHz. The delay uses left 1 8 and right 1 quarter with feedback set to 47.5, and this delay uses a little bit of crossback that's set for 16, and the mix is at 34%. Then that flows into a reverb with approximately a 5 to 6 second reverb tail. This is one of the longest reverb tails we've looked at in the course so far. And then also low dampening for bright reverb sound. And then it flows into the main output. Okay, let's build this patch. Okay, I'm starting from the initialized patch. And this is what the sequence sounds like right now. Okay, so that's a familiar initialized patch sound. And for oscillator 1, we're going to first start off by setting it to 11 and setting the detune amount to 17.5. We're going to increase the mixer volume to 114. And we want this to have a wide sound, so we're going to set the width to 100. And for the waveform itself, we're going to leave it as a saw wave, but we are going to set it to crisp to get that brighter saw sound. Okay, next. We will add oscillator 2, set its stacking mode to 11, and detune that as well. This is going to be detuned quite drastically. We're going to set the detune amount to 50. And 
and set the volume. We're going to bring the volume down to 48. <laughs> and bring the width up to 100. And for a moment, I'm just going to disable oscillator 1 so we can hear how oscillator 2 sounds by itself. Quite a lot of detuning there. And then when we bring in oscillator 1 and 2. OK, next let's add oscillator 3. And oscillator 3, we want to set its voices stacking mode to 11 and set detune to 50. And oscillator 3, we want to tune one octave higher, so set tune to 12. Okay, you can start to hear that higher octave notes being played there. Now for the mixer volume, we're going to lower that to 48. And set the width to 100. I want to demonstrate the effect that oscillator 3 is having on the sound. So I'm going to bring the volume level down to zero and gradually mix it in setting it to 48 again. So this way you'll hear it with just oscillator 1 and 2 and then I'll bring oscillator 3 up. So you can just start to hear that higher octave pitch being part of the sound. It's not overbearing, but it's noticeable. Okay, now let's add oscillator 4. And before I configure 4, we need to set oscillator 2 to crisp and 3 as well. That way all three oscillators have the bright saw sound because of that crisp mode. And then for oscillator 4, we're going to set that to quad. And we will leave it at soft on this one. So now it sounds like this with the quad saws in oscillator 4. <laughs> And I want to bring the tune. We're going to set the tune to minus 12. So that helps give some bottom end to the sound. Set detune. We're going to detune it slightly. Set it to 10.5. And for this one, we're going to mix it in a lot lower. So I'm going to bring it all the way down to zero and we'll set mixer volume to 26. Now set the mixer width to 100. Okay, that takes care of the oscillators. Now we need to add a noise generator. So select noise one. And we want to lower the volume considerably. So I'm going to bring it down all the way to zero and then mix it back in. And we're going to set the volume to 26. Set the width to 100. And make sure stereo is selected here. And bring the filter down to 86.5. OK, so next we want to set up the envelope 1. And I'm going to set the decay to 26. And we can start to hear the effect that that is having on the note articulation. Now bring sustain up to 84. And 
and increased the release some to 26. And then finally bring the velocity down to zero. Okay, now we need to bring in a filter. So add VCF1, set the filter type to LP mid drive, and we're going to leave cutoff at 150, increase resonance to 8.5. And we will be modulating the filter cutoff, so add ENV2 as a modulation source and set the amount to 68. Now you'll notice that it did not have any effect on the sound, and that's because cutoff is already at the maximum. If I bring it down, we'll hear the effect that ENV2 currently has on this, and we'll make adjustments to the EQ and to the envelope in a moment. So I'll leave it there while we adjust envelope 2 settings. So we want to set the decay time to 37.5. Bring sustain all the way down to zero. Bring release up to 24. And bring velocity to zero. So now I'll, I'll manually move the cutoff frequency to demonstrate how this is, could sound. So you can do an automation of the filter cutoff frequency to have it get brighter and brighter as the sequence plays. So next, uh, that pretty much covers all of the oscillators, the noise generator, filter, and envelope setup. Next we need to add effects. So first we're going to add an EQ. And we want to set filter 1 just above 175 hertz with a plus 1 dB boost. And then filter 2, put a minus 4 dB cut just below 300 hertz. We're going to increase the resonance and that will narrow the bandwidth. Filter 3, we're going to put a plus 4 dB boost just below 3 kilohertz. And we want the bandwidth to be broad, so we're going to lower the Q value to zero, so right click on the filter and drag down, and that broadened the bandwidth. So let me do that actually with the sequence playing. And finally, filter four, we're going to put a plus 1.5 dB boost with the high shelf filter at just above 1 kilohertz, close to 1.2 kilohertz. And again, that's a plus 1.5 dB boost. And that helped brighten it up some. And increase the Q value or resonance to 49. Okay, that takes care of the EQ. Next, we're going to add delay. And for this one, we're going to leave the sync times as they are, but we're going to lower ratio to 50, which has the effect of causing the sync time to be scaled by 50%. So in effect, it's cut in half and would be equivalent to 1 8th. Want to increase the mix value to 34, the feedback to 47.5, 47.5, and the crossback to 16. So I'm just going to lower both of these bring the mix up to 34 and then I'll set feedback and crossback.
Okay, next, add reverb. And here we're going to set dry to 100 and set the wet to 36.5. So I will go ahead and bring that in. For the range value, we're going to set that to 83, feedback 73.5, dampening 5.5, speed 23, and modulation 46. So I'll just go through and make those changes. Okay, last thing we need to do is make some level adjustments. So we want to bring the output, bring that up to 72.37 and bring the master down to 78. So I'll do the master first. That's it for this patch. I'll see you in the next video.